Hello everyone and thank you for coming back to Dale Chanel's 48th World and we're going to be talking about changing a little course today uh, on this particular video we're going to be talking about Miss Portia Williams and the pursuit of Portia her book we're in chapter 4 now and uh golly I thought it couldn't get worse but it keeps getting worse about each chapter okay and partly it is her fault because you don't put yourself in certain situations and you don't anticipate somebody else's ideal of what they're going to provide for you as a future. You just don't do that. You get your shit yourself. If you like all that high price stuff, you like the cars, you like the houses, you like the apparels, be your own self-made boss like you're trying to portray that you are now. Don't have nobody else's money that you're depending on to make a life for you because when it's all done and said what do you really have you depending on a man to still take care of you after the relationship is over with is that what your mother taught you is that what you saw your dad do to your mother because your mother was supposed to have been working with your dad at their company and then one day she decided she didn't want to be working anymore she wanted to be a housewife was that a decision that you uh, your parents made together or something your mama made. Now, I'm just going to use this man. I don't know if he bolo. I don't know him from a panic cane. But to tell my story, I had to use some kind of man. But Portia fell in love once again with a guy called Southern John. And at first, I was trying to put him with uh, Lil John. You know that? Hey! You know the one to be doing all that crazy talk, Lil John. Look him up if you don't know him. He's a rapper. Okay, but my daughter's going to swear that it wasn't him. Whether she changed the name or not, he did not have a limp. He wasn't in a car accident. He wasn't kind of disfigured a little bit with a scar, a deep uh, menacing scar on his face. He wouldn't have like that. But I don't know. I thought it was Lil John. I thought Lil John would run around in a Hummer as well. But this guy, she calls Southern John in Chapter 4. She met through her cousin, Tip. I'm like, is that Tip as in Big Red Clifford Dog, T.I. Harris? Is that... And my daughter assured me it wasn't him as well. But anyway, she met up with this guy. She met through her cousin named Till. And she tells this romantic story of how he wined and dined her, this, that, and third. Uh, she met all his family members. They live in South Carolina. They live on this big type of land structure. Many, of, many, many acres. And, <coughs> like I said, it's in South Carolina. And he had this property of land that he built... A house for his mother on, a house for his aunt on, and a house for her children's, or her, his aunt's children. And on that piece of land, he was going to come back and build him a house for him and his family. So it was just like, <sighs> hell, I don't understand why he just didn't buy, uh, I mean, build one big mansion and just had like 16, 20 rooms and everybody was just in the same house. Something like uh, Dallas, South Fork. Y'all remember that miniseries they had back in the 80s that we, uh, all probably looked at you know jr and um sue ellen and uh, lou ellen hell i don't know jock is the one that got me the daddy of the big ranch and stuff and jr and it was bobby and probably a host of other people but i can't really remember remember i know miss ella or miss ellen she was jock's wife and you didn't mess with her and she was a mean cookie too then it was sue ellen which was uh jr's wife and i don't forgot what bobby's wife's name was but anyway, it really don't matter. Just look up Dallas, uh, South Fort, and you'll get the whole little spiel of who was on there and everybody that really made that show a hit back in the 80s. But anyway, this this young man, evidently he took his life very serious. She, she goes in and say he had many, many um, uh, franchises or whatnot, businesses and stuff. Uh, but he owned a lot of land and he was willing to, uh, I guess, pick the right chick or whatever and settle down with her and this, that, and the third. But how they met was like I said through his cousin through her cousin and they was at some kind of party or they was in their 20s as well she says early 20s or no she says 20s and you're just you know just having a good time out in Atlanta running them Atlanta streets and she goes in and said it didn't take him long to leave with her number meaning evidently they were looking at each other from across the room wherever they were at and this that and the third but uh she knew initially that this particular guy named Southern John was with somebody else. I don't know if they were taking a break or whatnot or of the relationship. 
or they were still together and Lil John on uh, let me say not say Lil John but Southern John was uh eyeing her like okay if I'm off with this other girl that I kinda like then I might well go on and set my sights on somebody else that I look uh or they looking at me and I'm looking at them and I wanna get to know. And see I just used that little lady as his aunt because he talked about her really highly or Portia talked about her and the grandmama and um how they were very very uh close to him meaning uh southern john and john used to go visit them all the time on the land and property he had bought them as well as the house and i'm just using this lady don't know who she is from a can of paint and portion don't know her either but i used her as the grandma um because he he definitely went home to his um where they live in south carolina a lot uh so he was a homebody, but why he was doing a lot of business up here in Atlanta, I have no idea. But he was supposed to have the whole nine yards, you know, the whole farm life going on. He built houses for his family members. And he just, you know, wanted them to be good, feel good, and just live life, you know, the country life. And Portia saw herself all in that beautiful scenery that of a portrait picture he was showing her. In her mind, he actually showed her one day when he took her home to meet his people. Okay, and I don't know if Portia taught that, taught, or thought that was a way of him opening up the door by telling his family, I think she the one uh, I'm going to end up marrying one day. Because she said they had all, all talked about it, and well, not all of them, but just him and her. And, you know, they had talked about a promise ring and, and things of that nature, moving towards that thing. But, of course, they were only five months into their relationship. It wasn't like they were five years in their relationship. And tell you the truth, I ain't giving no man no five years, okay? But you don't give them five months either to say, uh, yeah, I want you. Let's go on and do it. This, that, and the third. Especially in these days and times now. And then you, well, she didn't have a kid at the time. So they're still, like, in their young adult age. Portia say in her 20s, I don't know how Southern John or uh, how old he was at the time. It could have been plausible that he was around her same age, maybe a couple of years older. Not really sure. But the man had it financially going on to a degree that he felt comfortable with, you know, showing her his some of his assets. Not on paper, but just the materialistic stuff. I guess to have a gauge on how Portia was going to do. But Portia was trying to live like Beyonce. She was, tr she was trying to live that glamorous, fabulous <sighs> life. But this girl, Beyonce, was out there hustling. Her dad had her up in the camp hustling and making money at four or five, six years old. Okay? She knew about the grind. So she made her wealth already before she even got with Jay-Z. It was just complimenting him and she was upgrading him a little better to dress more in suits. Be more professional. Be more grown. On grown man shit. You know what I'm saying? Kind of almost like she was trying to adapt him to her daddy's looks. Versus him going around in saggy jeans and, you know, looking like, you know, a thug. A, a drug dealer. You know, all that kind of stuff. You know, that look. The personage they give you. This is what this person uh, you trying to emulate looks like. You know, like you see a thug. You see them all tatted out. You know, wearing, you know, gangster like clothes. And, and, and probably doing the bandanas and all that stuff. So, this, that's a street thug. That's what they give us as an optical vision of what that may represent. You see a businessman, you're going to have him in a suit, tie, maybe a fedora hat. Who knows? You know, depending on what um, type of profession he's in or whatnot. And the list goes on and on as far as your profession or your career choice. But, yeah, she was sitting up there talking about all this shit. And this man was like, you pump your brakes, baby. Pump your brakes. We'll get on into that. But, anyway, let's just say, let's just read a little excerpt of how it took off. She goes on to say, uh, it didn't take him long to leave with my number. I knew he had dated one of my cousin's friends, but I didn't realize just how deep it was between them at the time. I just thought that we both saw at the same time. Well, we both saw him at the same time, and after a night of flirting, he chose me. But after a month went by, my cousin called me up to clarify a few things. My friend is kind of mad at me because you're talking to him, tip permitted. And Portia goes on to say, what do you mean? We met him at the same time, and he chose me. Tell her sorry. I spat back a little sarcastically. No, I guess I didn't realize that they had had a relationship before. I didn't really know that they were that ch close. But she didn't say it. But she said he can be crazy. So the cousin was basically saying, from what her friend was saying, uh, that she knew of the guy, Southern John, that he could be a little 
crazy. Now, crazy you could take as crazy good, crazy bad, crazy where he's too obsessive, crazy where he may put them paws on you, whatever. But the cousin and the girl wasn't going to relay anymore since she had pretty much said she was the best winner. He chose her, this, that, and the third. So, she pushed one on her big grown ass shit. She could have just said, well, let me talk to the girl so I can let her know how we got together and that I really didn't know that y'all were that close. But, you know, try to have some camaraderie. Use the girl as your friend so you can get all the information you need to know before you continue to truck down this little road. Because it almost was like a red flag was given to you. Like, file on play, you try to be sarcastically with her. Encounter with your cousin saying, Well, y'all both were competing for this guy. I'm like, Damn, y'all, you, you back on that video whole shit. When you were trying to say these girls would do anything to get more time in the video or to date that particular artist or to run around with that particular artist, but you wasn't about that life. You know, uh, they were throwing their sales at them. But it seemed like I me, mean, you were doing the same thing. You just wanted the man to come to you. And then you would do everything else that those girls were trying to do that the guys hadn't selected yet that they wanted to be with that night so you was just playing the field like i'm gonna look enticing over here i'm gonna look real uh like a jezebel spirit and lord and behold he gonna chose choose me like she was some kind of siren if y'all don't know what a siren is it's kind of a mythical creature uh back when they were trying to seduce men to their deaths uh by playing this high-pitched voice of music that kind of took over the man's spirit and you know they would it's, i guess it was more like sailors or men on boats they were singing this lullaby a love song to them and it was just so enticing and so embracing they couldn't break the spell that that music had over them and then they end up you know succumbing to their death or whatnot but it's just a lure tactic of a jezebel spirit or a, a demonic spirit trying to get a man to do whatever they want to do to end in a sense, his life back then in the day. And it's still doing the same. Look what she's doing. She uh, was saying Fallon was a cast member on the show. And she was defending Fallon. But she ended up taking Fallon's husband. Okay. Same with Dennis McKinley. I think he was dating somebody else too. Or maybe not. Because he loved women. Period. And he don't mind being a bachelor. But he has the money to cater to them. However he see fits. Not how they see fit. But it kind of messed with my head. And I'm saying. This stuff that I'm reading about. This young boy that she was messing with in her 20s. She did the same shit to Dennis. She was parading him around. Trying to um, make him into something. That it wasn't a situation at the time. Then she sat up there. And went ring shopping with him. I mean they weren't uh, close. That I know of. From you know watching her go through social media with all her little comments and goings with her men they weren't even dating six months to a year before she was putting this man out trying to have a baby by him you know one in the family for even getting the ring type of situation and she she definitely sealed the deal with doing that but she didn't get married to him because he cheated on her and i'm like well you ain't really about that man woman real marriage life either you should just went on and married dennis and he just been cheating on you pretty much like your dad cheated on your daddy i mean your mother and um your uh sister mom lisa so both of you know you see what i'm saying girl it, it's just crazy it's like you're living your daddy's life but you're actually being the pimp and the hoe at the same time i don't know how you could be both of them at the same time but you're doing a very good job okay because it get confused the lines are blurred the water is murky right here when i'm looking at you and you going back and forth in your real life and you had this real situation happen to you in your early 20s it's like girl you haven't learned anything and you're damn in your 40s now going close to your damn near 50s and you, so that tells me you're not gonna learn anything because you like using other people's money even though in some of this book you say they was trying to use you for funds but it seems to me that was only maybe 10 percent of the time the other eight well the other 90 percent of the time you were doing the using of the comings and goings of getting people or getting your men's money but anyway um let me see the cousin pretty much tell portia that you know from what she's understanding that her friend is telling her southern john is crazy but like i said she didn't really elaborate and if i was the girl if portia came off on me snappy like that and thinking she won the race on getting uh southern john from her then let her find out you know for herself you already gave her a pre-warning so <coughs> i think portia just took a lot out of her mom ways and she took a definite a lot of her daddy ways of using people 
them up and then trying to sit there and play victim. And like I said, I don't really know what transpired to have her mom, Diane, sit there and want to retire from the family's business. But she damn sure did and she became a housewife. And was that something she should have talked over with her husband first? Was it an amicable decision for her to do that or she just did it on her own? I don't know. Sorry about that. I had to clear my throat. But that just seems like the jet setting life Portia set out for herself. And like I said, kids emulate what they see. So I'm pretty sure Portia saw a lot coming from her mother and her dad and probably other family members in her uh, biological family or immediate family that she took up some of their traits. Because <coughs> I just don't think you're just born with the innate ability to say i'm gonna be selfish 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 i'm gonna be all about me i'm gonna dress this certain way i'm gonna live this certain way i'm gonna have this certain man and this that and the third unless it was shown to you and you liked it and what it could possibly do for you and your future uh once you got grown up or whatnot but uh <coughs> she calls this southern john uh he's from ellenwood georgia which is just 10 minutes away from me and like i said we have land out here we have uh subdivisions that sit on maybe lots or acres or whatever i'm on a lot situation i ain't got that much front and i ain't got that much back and i love it uh, i mean if you kind of like it's enough land for me i can say but it's not like i have acres or whatnot but around my area that i live in you can go into uh some sub well not really subdivisions because you only have like maybe seven houses in that subdivision because the land is so dense and you know they made the houses real well they didn't like have like 30 some houses or 100 some houses in one big subdivision you know like only me in my subdivision i think we only have like 50 houses maybe it might be 38 it's from 38 to maybe 50 houses that's it but when you don't live in a subdivision area around where I live it's a lot of land you can buy you can purchase you can just plop your little house on you know mansion whatever because houses is not the the it all be all it's the land that you be paying for half the time but anyway I just want to give y'all a little uh visual there but you know like I said he wasn't aesthetically uh pleasing to the eye I meaning he wasn't no gorgeous man but i don't think Porsche ever dated anybody that was really really gorgeous except for these guys that she was trying to bring on or this one guy she was trying to scare into uh, get him into a contract to have a baby with and i don't know what she was doing but that uh, this cute little fella she had on the show uh early on in her career real housewives of Atlanta, and she really was treating him like a kid because he was acting pretty much his age and he didn't have no time be sitting out there making big big plans and decisions about his future and Porsche was trying to rush the little guy you know trying to make him be who she wanted him to be which in my eyes i know that wasn't gonna work because he had he had his own identity he knew what he wanted he knew he got, what he wanted to to do it get out of it or get into it and he wasn't that kind where you could really really control him so he kind of showed us a baby side then he kind of showed us a grown full side but it just ear with an ear but going on into a little bit more about mr southern john she says he was a, cl uh, a country boy and she felt that in her heart that he could be my country husband and we could live happily ever after in the country. Now anybody that know Portia, Portia ain't no country girl, okay? This is kind of like suburban, um, modern day country if you must. But because anything in the south, everything's country. You got to have a car. You can't just be dependent on, you know, subways or or. or uh, uh trains to get you where you need to go even though we don't we have we don't have a subway but we have like a train like a system where it does go kind of it don't go underground it goes like on top of the ground e either way it's kind of similar to a subway but not really it's called the modern transit um but it's nothing like new york or or those other places that have those real good railing transportation systems we both mostly really get around on buses down here if you don't have your own car truck van whatever because you're going to need something to that to be able to navigate through atlanta all of atlanta not just the city of atlanta where the night lights are but just different parts of georgia and it's several parts of georgia and they're rural so you're going to need transportation 
Okay. Um, then she goes on to say that her guy, her new boo, Southern John, owns several franchises and had bought a plot of land in South Carolina that all his family lived on. He had built a home for his mother, his aunts, and their kids. And he wanted to build himself his own home on that property so everyone could live in a makeshift village. You know, he and I, I ain't got nothing wrong with that either. Some people may do. They don't want that close-knit family because they may, may never have had it in their own biological family meaning a partner you're trying to bring into the situation now he was just introducing Portia to some things of his life because he really felt that it could she could be the one you know what i'm saying um and he didn't mind really taking care of her but Portia evidently didn't show the other side to these things uh her wanting luxury luxury and luxury and she wanted to be kept she don't want to work she want to have kids and she wants her husband to be able to provide for all their needs as well as her needs okay he haven't met that Porsche per se yet because i'm sure she was just playing her little game she was filling him out trying to see as much as she could and see how it could work out for her and her benefit so, uh, she even said that it was a beautiful scene out of a book that, or a movie that you could see of the perfect family, the perfect house, the dog barking in the background, and she's seeing him running around, the wind was all good, and it was sunny, she saw kids playing, and I said, when you see some shit like that, don't think everything cool, it's some hair running up in there somewhere, somehow, but you just probably ain't seen it. Because ain't nobody got no perfect family. And some may have it a little bit better than others. But, you know, you got some cussing and, 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 and some fussing going on right now sometime. Okay, when people want to step on other people's uh, feelings or get in their business and stuff. But, um, it was something that she really, really liked. And, she, you know, she wanted to raise her own family in that same surrounding. She wanted her mom and her sister and her brother to be a part of the same type of village that he had built for his family. Or he made sure his family had. So she just saw them as uh, equally yoked. And, you know, she loved the value of family and the moralistic uh, behaviors he had and that amazed her and that made her fall in love with him a little bit more and he treated his grandmother real special and I'm like did Simon treat his uh, mother special too Portia and he showed you while y'all was down there taking all them little propped up pictures to go on the uh, social media streets before you was trying to introduce us to Simon, girl. Then you say the same thing about his family. Girl, get out of here with this mess. And see, you, you experienced this stuff earlier on. Before you even got to Simon in your latter years. And you're still doing the same shit. Okay. And she's also claiming that his grandmother was a very, very sweet older woman. She goes on to say, you could tell John would make it a point to visit her. And I just thought it was so sweet that a grown man, busy with his own life, would take the time uh, <coughs> to always come and check and visit his grandmother. Check on her. Okay. She goes on to tell us that big John rolls around in a big white Hummer. And she, uh, she loves sitting in the passenger seat. She felt so protected. And all this kind of stuff since she had lost her... Uh, she was reflecting back that she had lost her dad at the age of 16. And, you know, she don't mind riding shotgun because this guy kind of uh, mirrored or really uh, took some similarities to her dad. And the feel that he would always be there to protect her. <coughs> but as we know, he wasn't there. He was a cheater, a liar, and everything else. And he probably put him some paws on Miss Diane. That's just me thinking since everything else is going bad. You know, with him uh, doing the family that way. And then he's sparking off having another family he uh, put up into place 30 minutes away from where her mom was staying. And then he damn had a mistress on the side having two wives, one ex, one uh, current. And then he had a, a girlfriend on the side. And I'm like, ain't this a bitch? That's, that's a crazy ass man. But anyway, she goes on to say the icing on the cake was that his future life plans are truly creating a village mirrored the life i had envisioned for myself so she was really looking at what he was actually doing showing improving and establishing uh and that was something portia wanted to do 
uh, moving on further, thinking she was going to do it with this guy. But like I said, they were only five months into the relationship. And how this girl got down, that was just too much. And she even admits it. She says, uh, it was no secret to anyone that I dove headfirst into this relationship. After five months of me fantasizing about our forever, I realized just how much he checked off and all the hypothetical boxes I held up against him. He loved his family, check. He had morals, check. He had a business, check. And he would lavish me with gifts. And see, that's why I get off the, I get off of the train she's trying to have me ride on with her. Why would you put so much into a five-month relationship that this man owes you everything from being a good husband, a good father for your children, and to provide for you, and to continue lavishing you? Now, this is a relationship that might have been five to ten years in. You know what I'm saying? He got a chance to know you and all your flaws. You got a chance to know him and all his flaws. But y'all still said, hey, I want to be with you. I think we can make it. It was a mutual agreement. But Portia had, in her mind, had already solidified, made the purchase, made the deal that this was going to be her man. And the only thing she had to do was just rope him in and, uh, uh, what do you call it? Throw the uh, fish line out there, hook them in, and reel them in for the kill. Okay, again, thinking she's Beyonce rolling out there. Again, nothing like Beyonce, because Beyonce worked hard even when she was a little girl. She was performing. She was building her empire. Thank uh, goodness to her dad, even though he didn't turn out to be so good towards the end. She had to fire his behind and get somebody to really manage her money. But he gave her the opportunity to show that she can work. She can provide for herself. And she didn't need a man, even though we found out that even Beyonce's um, mother, her dad, was cheating on her mother. And that was something that her and her sister's boys just really couldn't comprehend and understand because they felt their mom was always there for him. And, you know, Beyonce's mom was a really good, astute businesswoman because she kept all her businesses. Ain't no shit getting taken from her. No bankruptcy. She was self-made. She found a career choice. She loved doing hair. She got her own business. I don't know if they had several businesses, but she knew how to cultivate and create something that was uh, sustainable. Even when her husband had quit his high-paying job. I think he worked for IBM. I'm not really sure. Don't quote me. But, um... Yeah, uh, and he quit, and he said he wanted to be a full-time manager of Beyonce's career and get the other girls involved as her background singers and make some money. Because in the entertainment business, I guess, versus working a professional job, pays a lot more money, a hell of a lot more money, because too many people leaving their professional, good demeanor-type jobs to get into the field of, you know, ratchetness. I understand that, but like I said, what drives the the power of somebody making a drastic decision like that and throwing everything to the wind is that lucrative money that comes so fast you know with being in the inter entertainment business and navigating through the you know the crip falls you know the crooks and crevices of the mountain they have to climb and being able to see through it for them to make some money uh, and not being the owners of different entities like the distribution center that has to get your records or, or stuff out, the promotion, the marketing. You know, all this money has to come up front depending on how much they want to put in that particular artist or how much they believe in them. And right now, you don't really need no talent. They, they self-manufacture you. <laughs> so, it just depends on how and who are behind you, meaning the machine, and how it's going to turn out for you to make money for yourself, even though it's going to be a, probably a bad contract you got to enter in um, at the first start. But just as you go along, I guess you can keep negotiating. Don't really know. I just heard a lot about it. Okay, but then, um, you know, like I said, she goes on to make all these plans. And evidently, he had given her his credit card in the past and told her to go treat herself on him. You know, and she had done real well because he didn't fuss about anything to a certain degree from what she's telling us in this book. Uh, so, I, I can only gather the purchase she, she made prior to this uh, last purchase that she got a chance to use on his card was something you know he could basically deal with it wasn't exuberant it wasn't like real a lot of money that he wouldn't put on himself for her so this particular day uh he gives her the credit card she says one day he sent me to the mall with his credit card which he often would do uh in the past whenever he wanted to buy her things so uh she, she said i bought this beautiful bracelet and a ring 
I brought a promise ring today. I told him casually after leaving the mall. Now, first thing that would have came to my mind was how much was this promise ring and why did you go buy it? Don't you think that's something I would have wanted to do to, for you to surprise you? Don't you think I know how you wear certain items, what they look like? What not? I would hate the third degree on her ass and I would have said, show me the receipt. Show me the receipt. Because some promise rings that you would probably buy like at Zales, uh, Co when I'm out at Costco, because they have some pretty high rings too. But like, say, Zales, and, and at the time we were talking about this in her 20s, <coughs> they had to be a service merchandise. Uh, and I don't know if anybody know about that, but it was like a nice size, uh, um, low caliber type of uh, financial amount or monetary amount you could spend on real gold real silver jewelry it, I mean it didn't break the brain it, it, didn't, it didn't break you and then they had layaway plans and that's why I love them so much because I had some nice rings from them like three to seven eight hundred dollar rings you know I had to put on layaway but you know oh, I wanted them so I got them not just telling y'all a little bit of my business but they were economically uh, service merchandise I'm sure somebody y'all know who I'm talking about we, it ain't that old and ancient but anyway, they had diamonds from like, oh, fifty nine dollars all the way up to maybe the highest one that I think I saw was like maybe eight or nine thousand dollars. <coughs> but like I said, it was very economical. They had price points, uh, they had layaway that you could agree with. You know what I'm saying? But they weren't as high as the real out there, like James Allen, um, the Shane Company. Just, you know, I can't really think of uh, them right off the hand. But y'all know the high-ending uh, prices of five carats on up. You're talking about, uh, shit, 50000 You're talking about the lowest you could go is probably maybe 16000 on up. You know, it just depends on the carats you're talking about. And for the get this brother this disturbed, once you really found out what Portia meant, that girl went out there and bought an engagement ring, more than likely. Probably a bridal set, hell. That wasn't a promise ring, because you can get some cute promise rings at K's, Heldenberg, um, Zales. I can't really think of any more. I hear you, Walmart. Um, yeah, anybody, y'all know what I'm talking about. You get the inexpensive rings, less than a thousand dollars. They still real, but you have more like um, how do you call it? Um, damn, I can't even remember. They, they they're really cut, really thin. Um, they're not like a full carrot or half a carrot or one. It might be like one fourth carrot, one third, you know, something like that. But um, I, that, somebody told me I think they were called chips that look like diamonds, but they're diamonds to just real. I guess chipped up but like I said she could have got a nice promise ring even for $500 and like I said she went overboard she tipped the scale she did the wrong thing she shouldn't even bought anything a bracelet would have been fine I'm pretty sure that bracelet cost a pretty penny as well because Portia ain't trying to be you know seen or looked upon as no cheap shit going on her even though her body ain't nothing but a piece of dirt just hear what it is right because we know we look at dirt we walk on dirt but we dirt but she want to dress up smell good and put on all this stuff on dirt but okay but anyway the conversation goes on by i bought a promise ring remember we were talking about it i didn't wait for him to answer before i, I kept explaining what the new ring that's showing on my left hand meant okay now, so you can have a you can use your promise ring on the right hand it don't have to be necessarily on that left hand side but since you want to be dramatic you went and put it on your um uh, you know your left hand doing too much she said it means that we're in a relationship and the love that we have and the trust that we build and will lead us to one day to be together with this ring you're promising to marry me one day and he goes on to say all right Portia he said I couldn't help but notice a slight annoyance in his voice when he added but give me back my credit card and he did say that real quick fast in a hurry you're doing too much he said not too long after my trip to the mall Southern John said he wanted to take me to a horse ranch okay so it's like he's still festering about the situation but he took his credit card back all right meaning okay i need to figure out what would see me i was like what a bill is because i know they had to give you a bill 
I know you just didn't walk out that store without getting a receipt. That would have been my first thing. Cause when I had saw something that went into double digits, I said, I'll take it back. Take it back. Nope. Can't afford it. I don't care. And it was on his credit card. So you never know what type of payments he would have been making, you know, to pay for that rent. And he wasn't really all solidified that he wanted to have her as a soulmate, as a wife, you know, somebody he wanted to spend and have kids with, spend time with for the longevity and have kids with. He was still tossed up in the air because I'm sure he had some red flags on how Portia was dealing with him as well. And so she had this perfect dream in her head, but it was like, okay, I don't know. But anyway, she goes on to tell her mom and her cousin Tiffany, which I don't know who this one was because the show wasn't in her family, Port, uh, Portia's Family Matters uh, show she had. But anyway, uh, he had told Portia she wanted to take her to this little horse ranch or this uh, little bed and breakfast or whatnot. And, you know, of course, Portia got in her Googling ways or whatever we had at the time as a computer to tell us about certain places and certain events. She went and found out about it, and it was just very beautiful. And when they finally got there, you know, he was just whining and dining her. The person that owned the little R&B took them around, showed them around. Uh, he even booked a place where they would ride horses, and they found some little place where um, they were just showing, you know, all kinds of crazy stuff as far as beauty. And they sat and ate on the lawn, I'm guessing. Uh, well, he, uh, she said it was on a flower field gazebo. We drank chill champagne and had a bite to eat while looking out at rows and rows of beautiful trees, Georgia trees. And so it was just, you know, real good, real. Everything was, you know, taking its toll or taking its tone to a very successful, beautiful afternoon that they were spending together. Okay. Uh, but then John started acting crazy, you know. <laughs> she thought they were going back after that little afternoon um, scene that they had. And they were eating uh, probably a light lunch or whatnot. That they were going back, going back like the first night they had came and ate at the big house in a sense. Where the owners of the property, you know, had gave them a very good dinner. They was telling them all about how they acquired the land, why they wanted to do an uh, Airbnb on it, and this, that, and the third, and, you know, they had a nice dinner, but from this point, uh, that was the next day they had went and did that little treat thing between themselves at the gazebo and taking all the scenery in and stuff, she thought they were going back to go to eat at the main house, but he was taking her to an, a restaurant that was close by, and, um, you know, um, uh, things had changed she kind of found or felt that his demeanor and his attitude had changed as well uh she said he was very uh light-hearted the conversation wasn't as slowing as it was earlier that day and seemed like a light switch had switched off on him what he was that she knew uh prior to i guess her buying that ring uh he took a dark side and he was just like really fussing and stuff and she was trying to tell him that he was going the wrong way and he told her uh no nah, we don't go left we took right stupid so he was calling her out her name making her feel bad and then she was going in her mind like you know he was making her feel less than and why was she taking this from a man and this that and the third and you know she goes back and say you know in her 20s she just took a lot from men and stuff and i'm like well portia what did you give out to these men okay you using people's credit cards, sitting up there paying probably an absorbent amount of money that he wasn't ready to spend on you because you felt that you deserved it. This is what your mother and dad raised you to be. I'm guessing. I don't know. But uh, he wasn't happy. And he probably got that bill and started thinking about that bill. Like, uh uh, I can't pay this kind of money. You know, because he owned businesses himself or he owned a very successful business. And you never know what he was doing for his family as well. All that he had took on, he said he wanted to make right for them. That was something he did prior to him meeting Portia. So he was just probably talking about it to his friends. And his friend would probably tell him, you need to drop that trick. Or she's going to have your ass in bankruptcy. And he probably just thinking about it and thinking about it. And some things she probably was saying on that little trail wasn't adding up she was probably talking about more of herself and what he had to do uh to provide for them and she just probably came to a big uh massive uh that volcano in his head that erupted and he was just like uh-uh he was seeing red um 
But anyway, she goes on to say, um, he was still upset. They had to stop at a gas station because his light had came on in his armor. And, um, uh, you know, he went and did what he had to do about that. Uh, but she was just feeling like the relationship was going to take a different turn. Uh, then she goes on to talk about the worst part about it. It all is I never became familiar with accountability. I'm like, yeah, that's something your mom and your daddy didn't teach you. Being accountable for your actions. Because anybody that knew something about something and they love somebody, they wouldn't take their credit card and misuse it the way you did. And like I said, if he gave you his credit card, you know, before, you were acting responsible. But this particular time, you act irresponsible and you put too much money on that card. And then you kind of took something from him that he was probably going to give you anyway. Probably not that uh, kind of amount of money on a ring that you probably wanted him to spend. He could have upgraded this shit within two or three years of y'all being married. Who knows? But you didn't give him that opportunity. You stole that opportunity from him. And he felt some kind of way. Don't ever mess with a man and his money. Please don't do it. Okay? Don't, ask, don't mess with a woman and her money. You know? It just is what it is. You work too hard out there and then somebody else making decisions for you and not telling you. You know, y'all can talk about anything. Y'all can talk about going to the moon and back. But don't go buy no tickets the next day or the next month. Tell me I'm finna go to the moon. Out here, that was a conversation. I ain't finna tell you I'm finna go up there. Did I say I was gonna go up there? I told you it was a nice idea and maybe that's something we could think about later on. But that's not something I had put in staple, put in right, and I'm gonna do it. No. And then you did it. You didn't let him do it. It's like you proposing to men all around him. Well, you should just be waiting for a proposal if that's what you need to do. But don't rush and don't invite nobody for that conversation unless they're ready to do it. It's the man's job to go out there and do that. Because that means he don't sat in his mind saying he's going to take care of you and your needs and your wants not the other way around but it could be the other way around like if you self accept it and say yes I want to marry you because it's death for you apart through sickness and hell so that's when y'all contractual agreement starts okay but anyway uh, he went on and, you know, I guess after he got back in the truck, he went on and said, I'm sick of this shit. You spent all this money on this ring and I didn't even ask you to. You just took my credit card and bought a ring, he spat out, never looking in my direction. I had to correct him, John. I didn't take your credit card. You gave it to me. Now, see how stupid that is. You're going to play vulnerability. You're going to put the, the, the blame back on him. But you know exactly what he was saying. He might have said it in a kosher way or a befitting way. But he, you got what he was saying. But she, you know, like Portia fashion, she's going to try to switch it on him like it's his fault for giving her the credit card. And then technically it is. But he thought since she had been responsible the other couple of times, she would do just that and be responsible again. Because he probably wasn't that type of man that wants to go out and, and actually pick out something because he knew Portia was a picky person she liked certain things he didn't have time for this shit but he wanted to recognize that he he's he wanted to recognize to her I'm guessing that she played a very good pivotal nice part in his life and he wanted to keep her happy and he wanted to do something for her so he said baby go buy yourself something go look good for both of us baby you know treat yourself i got you and you know she was responsible the other couple of times it, it did not fathom to him that she would do something outlandish and out and crazy as what she did with bringing that high price ring to his doorstep that he would have to pay for okay but anyway um she said um and if it's that big of a deal i'll take the ring back it's not that serious i don't want to argue with you about it okay she said i love you i thought you wanted to give me a promise ring okay yeah, but I mean, you can't just take somebody's credit card and buy a promise ring. We talked about it, and the next thing you did was go to the mall and buy one. I didn't even ask you to, okay? And she said it was true. It was really was true. I showed up at the mall with a credit card, a diamond in my eye, and a dream in my heart. I'm not sure what made me actually calculate how much three months salary would be for John to figure out the size of the diamond he eventually buy me. But I wanted so badly to be with him to to get my happy happily ever after and more important to make it happen for myself. What I didn't realize at the time was that my dream coming to fruition in the form of a ring would unintentionally build resentment in John's heart. With him wanting to spoil me, he probably thought he couldn't dare say that it was too expensive. John turned everything amazing that we had done together and that he had done for me into a scenario in his mind where I manipulated or forced him to do so. I somehow had morphed into this mastermind who was taking his money and making plans for his life. He called her a stupid bitch, she said, breaking my train of thought and breaking my entire heart. Okay? 
so then at this time um he was uh you know loving on her this that and the third and when she did that awful thing that's why i said that ring she bought wasn't really a promise ring it probably was an engagement ring unless she went to some high priced jewelry store boutique or whatnot and that promise ring went up astronomically now she knew she not she shouldn't have spent that kind of money that's just common as sense let a man surprise you okay or like you just did hey you go buy uh, uh you bought an engagement ring for simon he paid for this shit so why did you expect for this young man to pay for you a ring okay <sighs> i don't know Porsche. you just crazy as hell but anyway, you know, they went back to the cottage or whatnot, and she was saying John was talking to himself underneath his breath, hitting the stern wheel, and this, that, and the third. And she knew that she was in for some rough times that night and uh, whatnot. But it basically goes into she calls herself getting ready for bed, and uh, she get in the bed with him, and there's still no talking. And see, them promise rings—they're real simple. They're real crude, and it could promise. It's a promise. It ain't saying I'm gonna do it. Cause we might start not liking each other. It's steps to it. But you see, them promise rings are real dainty. They're real cute, and they hold some value. Not a lot, but this helpful probably went about something like that right there, and something a little bit more. And she probably went to a four to five carat ring. You see what I'm saying? And he was like, uh, uh-uh. and then she bought a, a nice diamond bracelet at that you know them diamond bracelets can go up for a thousand or more depending on how many carrots are in that so Portia was just doing some real silly messed up shit but the, but really to the ending um they really wasn't sleeping together at the time and uh he you know was telling her to get back in the bed because she had made her way to the couch uh in that little room and she wasn't trying to feel him and everything i'm like girl you know what's coming next you don't sex that man from the time y'all started on that trip on that trip and for whatever reason don't know like i said he might have got the final bill he was like uh-uh i ain't finna pay this no ma'am no so no lord and if i am paying this then i need to be getting as much ussy from you than i can so pr- pretty much he was like he probably wanted to have sex she was refusing him this that and the third and he took advantage of her pretty much some people want to say rape some people want to say you know whatever i, I don't know what you call it in the situation i'm not condoning what the gentleman did to her but when you sit up there and you do a certain thing and they still haven't you know because if that was the case he was having problems we didn't have to go eat we didn't have to do now i'm gonna call me a tax so i'm gonna call somebody to come get me you ain't gotta come get me if you if i didn't trust you to take me home we, we ain't finna do none of that no more and then she should have just gave because i'm sure she was wearing the ring she should have gave him the ring back she said you know we're gonna have to work on this relationship right now i don't see it for us but i have to you know blame i put my blame my fault in or what i did to make you go into this other gentleman that i do not know at this time i'm sorry i did it we can work through it but right now i i just don't feel good being with you i want to go home oh you have you could have told the people that own the cottage to call you somebody because it's a situation that's going on you don't want to be bothered with i mean it's a, you know adult decisions that you could have made to got away from that person if you really wasn't feeling them you really wasn't being safe and after what happened to you that same night with him forcing himself on you uh yeah that would have been a good reason to get the hell out of there but like i said it is what it is can't go back in time and change things but you got to play it smart portion buy shit yourself don't depend on somebody else to set up a life that you built in your head that you need to have set it up for yourself and if you don't have the hair look at oprah she ain't not 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 married not 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 one damn day okay if, we, if we, she is married we don't know about it okay we don't know about it but she made her wealth herself she was able to keep Stedman here and there whenever she wanted him, of course, even though they're saying, you know, her and Gail King, you know, you know, they, they gay and all this kind of thing. But I don't know, but that's what the streets are saying over there. Okay. But uh, she definitely had Stedman by her side for a hell of a long time. And he wasn't going nowhere because he was a paid bought man as well. He made, she made much more money than Stedman okay and he was saying he was okay with it now they all and, and you know they probably you know they still together he around uh but it, it ain't no sense of it you know that was her partner for life and she chose not to be married because she could she saw what could happen to a marriage and that was just her way of living life and it was befitting for both of them so that's what they did but um yeah 
And but Portia still self blaming. She still self sabotaging and she don't see where she went wrong in that situation. When everybody obviously when you first read it, you know where it's going, you know who's the catalyst, you know who the driver of this vehicle to get what they want when they want how they want it, and they ain't using their own money. That's Portia all the way. Same thing with Dennis. He knew what Portia was doing. Same thing with Simon. He knew what Portia's doing. Okay, he knew his relationship with Fallon was uh, uh, fading real quick, fast, in a hurry. And Portia just saw an opportunity. She jumped on it and she snatched the man from him. Same thing she did in this scenario when she was in her early 20s. Okay, nothing has changed. That's what I'm saying. When this book Portia wrote out, she's talking about her growth, her scenarios that happened in her life. Very truthful, very painful. But she learned from them. But I don't see it yet. And I'm in chapter 4. Maybe when I get a little close to the end. But then again, I can't say she's changed because there's too much shit on her now. You see what I'm saying? Like, where is the growth? Where is the mentality where you've grown to a higher plane of existence and you're doing the professional, moralistic, democratically playing the part of somebody that's pivotal in society and want to make a difference i don't know i'm not i'm not seeing it Portia. i'm sorry i'm not saying it that's why i'm glad i paid 13 dollars with the change it might have added up to 15 something it might have been 19 it did go over 20 dollars what i'm saying so it just is what it is i'm trying to find out your life about your life i'm trying to understand the decisions you made in the past and why you're not making better decision choices in your 40s i don't know but anyway that's all i have for this video guys hope y'all like it love it gotta have more because i'm sure we'll be giving it to y'all y'all just need to come in the house have a conversation about it and if you want to pick up her book to make sure i am telling y'all the truth i'm telling y'all what she's giving me and it's just a bunch of shit but it is what it is i bought the book i'm gonna go through it <laughs> that's all i got to say but i'll see y'all next video y'all be blessed bye